Hello everyone! In the last community poll, the majority have voted for a new Unity shader graph tutorial and here we go. In today's video, I'll share with you how to create this awesome star field shader graph where you can control the star's density, the blinking speed of them. We will randomize the position and blinking of the stars. In addition, you can choose the star's power and make a gradient we will choose two colors to do a gradient between them. So this is Ramiz al from Binary Lunar and let's get started. If you want to learn more about Shader Graph and want to go from beginner into intermediate and even some expert techniques, you can check my full 2D and 3D Ultimate Shader Graph course on Udemy. I provide down a discount code in the description. Also, if you are planning to buy some assets, this is the perfect time because of the dev days of summer where you can buy the assets for 50% off for a limited time. So let's start a new Unity project from the Unity Hub. You can use the last LTS or use any available version for you. So let's stick to the LTS that I have, 2021.3.23 F1 but feel free to use any other versions. Just make sure that you select the 3D URP template and let's name our project star field shader. Create a new project. When you start a new scene, you should see a global volume, which is responsible for adding some post-processing effects like the bloom and vignette. What is most important for us is that you have the bloom enabled with threshold set to one and intensity set to one. Now let's create our shader graph by right click anywhere in the project files, then click create shader graph URP unlit shader graph because we want it not affected by the light in the scene since the stars will be uh, not affected by the lights. Let's name it star field shader. Let's open shader graph. We can extend this and set the color mode to category. The best and the fastest way to create quick stars shader, we can use as starting point the gradient noise since it will distribute a random noise on the material and that is what the stars looks in the sky. So let's create a new node and search for gradient noise. We need now uh, a parameter, a float to control the scale of the stars. So as you can see, if we scale this to higher amount, it will start to look like a millions of stars scattered in the sky. So let's create a new float and name it stars density. Link it to the scale and you can set the default value to 100 for now. Next, we want those stars to be uh, to seems like they are blinking. For that, we need to move this gradient over time. To do so, we will need tiling and offset node, and we'll link the output of that to the UV. We will be offsetting the position of the vertices using time and speed. So for that, we need a time node, and next we need a parameter to control the speed of the blinking. So we can name that blinking speed. Okay, add the parameter to the shader graph. Then we use the multiply node to multiply both the speed with the time. We link both of those to the offset in the tiling and offset, and we give uh, a default value. Let's check what happens if we put one, it will be like a moving texture and that's not what we need. We need them to feel like points blinking and we can achieve that by reducing the speed to a very low value. So let's try 0 0.01. It doesn't feel like star still. If you reduce that to 0 0.001 or maybe 0 0.02, I think that could be a good value. Okay, let's proceed. Now the stars feels like they are filling the sky more than the black areas because now we have somehow equally uh, white dots and black dots. To reduce the amount of the stars in the sky, we will use a power node to control how powerful are the stars or how many stars there are in the scene. 
And for that, we need a new float to control the power of the stars. And let's name it stars power. Multiply it with the power. As you can see, if we set the value to one, nothing's changed. As we increase the value, we're reducing the power of the stars. See, here, here's five, 10, 20. We have less stars, 25, less 50 maybe. And now we can see that we have this somehow feeling like blinking stars and that's the effect that we wanted to see but also we have a problem here we can see some pink dots that means we are reaching values above or below the range between zero and one that cause uh, those annoying points that will destroy the effect to remove that we just need between the power and gradient noise a saturate node to force the value to be between 0 and 1 and we will exclude any values above those, this range so let's add saturate node it's a range and link it to a at the power and as you can see now we got rid of the pink points then finally we simply link the results to the base color let's see what happened till now in the scene go back to the scene we can use that as skybox material so first of all we need a new material to hold uh, the shader graph so right click on the star field shader create click on material let's name it stars material then we go to window rendering lighting to the environment and we can see here the skybox material we replace that material with the material we created by dragging the material into the skybox material field and voila we can see the stars in the sky. Let's click play and see how it looks exactly in the play mode. It looks somehow okay, but not blinking as we expected. Let's see if we changed these values a bit, maybe 005. It's not exactly what we needed to see. So let's try to improve from this point. What we need to do is going back to the star field shader graph. Oh, actually, we're not seeing the glows because we didn't set the color to have an HDR value. So that was what I'm, I'm missing. So let's first multiply the final result with a color. So by that, we can control the color and the intensity of the color which generates the bloom in the scene. So we use multiply node to multiply the color we created with the stars we generated. We can convert this to property, convert to property and name it stars color. We can set the default value. Let's, uh, okay, something orangish. And here is the most important thing to set the mode from default to HDR. And now we have a new value called the intensity to control the intensity of the color which generates a bloom in the scene. Let's set it to five, save, go back to the scene. Let's see what, oh, that's amazing. It feels now like the sky is full of gold. You can make the scene rendering each frame by clicking on this button here and set always refresh so you can see always refreshed frame rates so we can maybe increase the star's power so now we have less points 500 even yeah something like that but still too much uh stars in the sky and also they are not glowing as we expect to improve this effect let's go back to the shader graph and to give more randomization to the stars and more glow, we can repeat the process, but uh, giving the time or the speed inverse value to do values in the opposite direction or opposite effect. So we can here multiply the speed with minus one. Then we copy everything here from the tiling and offset to the power. Just link this multiply to the offset here. Now we're doing the inverse effect of the first one. Then we multiply both of the star fields we generated together before multiplying them with a color. So let's uh, multiply node here, then link it to the multiply. So now we have less stars, 
better glowing and we can make sure of that from the scene let's save go back to the scene and yeah those looks like more randomly generated stars in the sky maybe power 100 and that's really cool you can reduce the speed if you feel that those glows are very fast and yes now we have very pleasing stars effect you can control the density to control the size of the stars the less the value the bigger the stars 50 look how big they are even five yeah they will be bigger and more scattered but i think a value like 100 is great so if you want to enjoy that in the game scene you can add to the camera fly camera script or let's see camera free camera sorry then when you hit play and maximize the view you can rotate the camera and enjoy viewing the space amazing as an extra step you can add more colors to the stars in the sky by many different ways i'll show you one of them then you up to you to upgrade this shader graph to meet your expectations so let's assume we need to add two gradient color i mean a gradient color between two values we can go back to the shader graph and now we need uh, stars color one we have that already stars color one we can copy paste and rename it to stars color two and we will learn between the two colors based on the direction of the gradient of the uv of the material so we need to start with the uv which represent the vertices on the uv then we need to select on which direction we need to do the gradient. So if you want to do it, let's say vertically, we will use the Y axis. So we need to split the UV to gain access to the Y axis, which is represented by the green channel. If you want to set the preview, it will show you which axis we gained. So here we have the Y axis. We do a gradient from top to down, or we say you can say from down to top. If you want it from right to left, you use the R channel, the red channel representing the X axis. As you can see now, the gradient from left to right. Let's keep it uh, from bottom to top. Then we will use uh, a LERP node to LERP between two values based on this gradient that we created. So let's create a LERP node we link the mask or the gradient to the T channel. Then we put the colors in the A and B channels. So first color, star color one, the yellow one. See, it's filled the gradient from the top side. Then the color two will fill from the bottom side. But since they are the same color, we can see the difference. Let's change the other one to some reddish. Maybe because the intensity is high, we can see the results in the preview mode but no problem just remove the color that connected at the multiply in the end of the shader graph and put the lerped value here in the multiply you can see the results here we lerping between red stars and uh, yellow stars you can set a more vivid value by setting something blue okay let's save and test that in the scene as you can see at the top we have bluish stars at the bottom we have yellowish ones great that's what we wanted to achieve and that's the end of today's video if you found this video useful don't forget to hit like subscribe and the notification bell to keep updated with quality tutorials of course we are deeply thankful to our supporters on patreon who keep generously supporting us to create such a content and if you become a Patreon, you can gain access to all our project files since we started this channel. Till next video, see you soon.